The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in the gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Yes, it's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring, well, naturally, Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, editor and owner of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, Susan's ace reporter. As we join our two stars, we find Irene, that is Susan, consulting with Fred, I mean, George, on a weighty matter concerning the city of Hillsdale. About this wave of safe robberies in town, Susan, I was thinking that if you could write another editorial putting the blast on the chief of police... Well, what'll I call him this time, George? Bungling and inefficient are corrupt and knavish. Well, make it a little of each. Keep them off balance. And be sure to say that he... Good afternoon. Have I the pleasure of addressing Miss Susan Armstrong? Why, yes. J. Palmer Herrick of Hollywood, the capitals of Europe, the New York stage, and now in virtual retirement in your so beautiful little city of Hillsdale. Well, how do you do, Mr. Mm. Herrick? Uh, this is Mr. Harvey, a reporter on our paper. Oh, how are you? Yes, indeed. Uh, Miss Armstrong, not as a commercial venture, but merely to express my appreciation for the hospitality of your delightful little town, I am founding here the J. Palmer Herrick School of the Dramatic Arts. Now, please get the spelling right, Harvey. It's H-E-R-R-I-C-K. Well, uh, that's fine, uh, we'll be glad to run a story on the dramatic page. Dramatic page? <laughs> My dear lady, this is headline news. You see, Mr. Herrick, our space is rather limited just now. There's a local crime oh, wave and... Let me get over here. No, no, don't, don't turn your head. <laughs> I want to see the left profile. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing? But... Lily Jean Doe, when she played Roxanne to my Cyrano in our triumphal European tour. You've been on the stage, of course, Miss Armstrong. Well, no. That is, I did several walk-ons in college. I knew it. You will, of course, enroll immediately in my school, Miss Armstrong. Immediately. Too much time has been wasted already. Dramatic training? Me? Well, really, Mr. Herrick... No, you owe it to yourself. To the world. Well, I... I really don't have any serious aspirations about the stage. Susan, you're not going to fall for this. Can't you see it's just an angle to get free space in the paper? Space? <laughs> what is space when placed beside a discovery such as this? Why, we of the theater, Sorry, my Jim, dear... Sorry, you just happen to have picked the wrong person, that's all. Miss Armstrong is a very intelligent woman, and she certainly knows that the idea of her having stage possibly is well, it's just completely laughable. <laughs> well, George... Well, Susan, you're not laughing. Well, I don't know. See anything so excruciating about my taking one or two classes? Perhaps bringing out the inner... The inner... Ham? Good. I shall expect you tonight at eight, Miss Armstrong. But why not? Oh, brother. The delight of the unexpected. I come on a trifling errand, the very nature of which escapes me, and I find another Lily Jando blooming in the wilderness. Come, Harvey, to work. Be sure you get the spelling right now. H-E-R-R-I-C-K. And the address is 1924. Seven o'clock, Mr. Harvey. You're not going out for dinner? No, Sammy. I guess I'll just have you run down and get me a sandwich again. Ham and cheese again? Mm, no, let's make it something different tonight. Uh, ham, salad, and cheese. Oh, for the good old days when you used to get invited over to Miss Armstrong's, huh? Yeah, seven course meals we had, starting with... Oh, well, one mustn't live in the past, Sammy. And one must sacrifice for one's art. That's what Miss Armstrong says. Yeah, only it's her art and my sacrifice. At 10.30, I am privileged to call for Miss Sarah Bernhardt at the theater and escort her home. Shall I get your sandwich now? No, no, I'm not hungry, but... Uh, well, I'll toy with it a while. This is the winter of my discontent. How's that? Well, Shakespeare, Sammy. I pick up crumbs of information like that from the theatrical set. Poor Mr. Harvey. Yeah, poor Mr. Harvey. You 
see, class, under the Stanislavski method of what you act, you must be, and what you set your mind to, you will be. A woman betrayed, a waterfall, a Grecian urn. Do you understand, Miss Armstrong? I think so, Mr. Harry. You may call me maestro. And now, and now we shall try it. All right, Susan. Uh, you're through? Oh, hello, George. In a minute. Yeah, the stage, Harvey, is for the actors. Well, excuse me. I saw you out here, and I thought anyone could come out. Philistine. We, we shall try it, Miss Armstrong. You are a woman faced with a tragic choice. You are being asked to give up everything. Title, kingdom, family, friends, everything. To share the hovel of a penniless poet, the man you love. Susan, you must be that woman. I'll try, Maestro. Your cue. You must choose, beloved. Choose between Francois, I who can offer you nothing, and the palaces, the jewels, the trappings of glory. I am waiting, beloved. I... Choose between power, pomp, all things the world holds of value, and to balance the scale, only the love of poor Francois. Choose. I... Choose between a lifetime of security and ease and the day-to-day, hand-to-mouth struggle which will be your life with me. I await your answer, beloved. Is it yes or no? Yes. Well, it needs more work, Susan. I had the feeling I was carrying you. If you were, it was a short trip. Please, George. Well, that's all for tonight, class. You have your assignments. Work on them. Live them. That is all. Excuse me, Miss Armstrong, but would you and Mr. Uh, Mr. Harvey, uh, uh, this is Miss Cartwright, George, a uh, reporter for the news. Well, how do you do? Uh, would you and Mr. Harvey just possibly be going my way? It's so late, and I don't happen to have an escort, and I just want... Well? Why, uh, certainly, Miss Cartwright. Your way is our way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just awfully nice of you, especially since I'm a rival reporter. A friendly rival, that is. You're sure you don't mind? Mind? Why, why that's ridiculous, isn't it, Susan? He's practically hilarious. And the three of us can discuss Stanislavski... You've been on the stage, of course, Mr. Harvey. Me? Oh, no, no. No? Why, this is unbelievable. Were those theatrical features? The... Oh, you really think I have theatrical features? Pull in your balcony, George, and let's go. Oh, but you have faced the public in some capacity, Mr. Harvey. Well, I... Uh, I did play a saxophone solo at my high school graduation. <laughs> Maestro! Maestro! Uh, yes? I've made a discovery. Well? Mr. Harvey, give him a line reading, Maestro. I'm sure he's one of us. Well, I I wouldn't say that. Well, neither would I. Are you coming, George? Well, no, no, wait, Susan. After all, if there is something in me, I, I should give it a chance to come out. Exactly. You owe it to yourself. Here, read this, Mr. Harvey. Uh, well, <clears throat> choose, <clears throat> choose between a lifetime of security and ease and the hand-to-mouth struggle which will be your life with me. I await your answer, beloved. Well? Well, Maestro? Well, maestro? Mm. Uh, you understand, Mr. Harvey, that the lessons here are on a strictly cash basis? Oh, oh, of course, of course. The relentless scourge of commercialism across the bent back of the artist. Huh? Mr. Harvey, you are one of us. Well, <laughs> well, uh, coming, Susan? Uh, Miss Cartwright? Coming, fellow artists? <laughs> down, George boy, down, down. <laughs> Good morning, Patience. Good morning, Miss Susan. Your breakfast's all ready. Thank you, Patience. Well, how are you getting along with Stanislavski? I'm developing, I think. But it's really a difficult concept. Especially the assignments the maestro gives us. What are you today? Today I'm a coffee pot. Oh, Shall I put the asbestos pad under you? No, I don't think so. Thanks. Oh, doorbell. That's George. He's calling for me this morning. I'll get it. Oh, good morning, Patience. Good morning. Is Armstrong up yet? Up and percolating nicely, thank you. Right in here. Uh, Mr. Harvey, Miss Susan. Thank you, Patience. Good morning, George. Good morning. Uh, do I detect a slight chill in your greeting, Susan? Not at all. But really, George... Last night. Well, Miss Cartwright thinks I'm doing rather well. I've only been with the group a week. She thought I even stole the scene I did with you. Well, naturally. 
shuffling your feet all during my big speech. Well, it was just a little bit of business I worked on. I thought it added something. Oh, why didn't you break into a soft shoe? We mustn't let things drag, you know. Uh, some toast, Mr. Harvey? How about a slice of ham? We seem to be overstocked. No, thanks, Patience. Well, we'd better be going. Coming, Susan? Yes, George. And, George, hmm? I want to talk to you about the, the little habit you have of crossing in front of me on my lines. Cross in front of you? The stage is movement, Susan. If you stay rooted in one spot, rooted? I can hardly... Just because I don't consider that I'm trying out for a track meet, there's no reason why you should... Have to oh, like now they're actors. Next week, a trip to the moon. <laughs> That's all for tonight, students. Work on your assignments. See you tomorrow. Oh, Susan. Susan, you don't mind if I drop you off first tonight and then take Imogene home, do you? Mine? Why, of course not, George. Whatever put that into your head? Oh, well, that's swell. You see, it's a much shorter walk that way, and Imogene thought that the two of us could talk over the scene we're in together. I uh, told her you wouldn't mind. Well, of course not. Better still, why don't I just walk home alone? Practically the same thing anyway. Oh, now, wait a minute, Susan. There's no reason to take that attitude because of... Susan! Susan, come back here. I wonder what made her flare up like that. What made Miss Armstrong leave so quickly, George? No, she, uh, she didn't feel well, Imogene. Oh, nerves, I guess. Yeah, I do feel sometimes that the strain of being an executive and a woman at the same time is too much for anyone. But she does make such a good try at it. Yes, yes, she does. And then it must be hard for her, your paper getting scooped so many times by the news on these crime stories. Well, that won't keep up forever, Imogene. Those crooks are going to be nabbed soon, and I'm going to be in on it. Uh, here's your office building, George. Is somebody on the paper working late tonight? No, I don't think so. Well, isn't that a light on inside? Yeah, yeah. Hey, it looks like a flashlight. Imogene. Somebody's in there cracking the safe. You stay here. I'm going in. I'm going with you, George. George, hmm. they put out their light. Yeah, yeah, you stay here. I'll throw a bluff into them. All right. I know you're in here, and I've got you covered. Come out with your hands up. I said come out with your hands. Hey, put the light on him, Eddie. Sure. My, he's a big one, Max. Yeah, but not trustworthy. He told us he had a gun. Oh, well, he didn't need one. Uh, excuse me, but are you robbing the safe? Ah, uh, here's another, Eddie. Lady, we already robbed the safe. Well, you shouldn't have, but as long as you did, would you do me a favor? The money we don't give back. Oh, no, no. You see, I work for the other paper in town. Would you mind tying up George here until my paper can get on the streets with the story? Well, I don't think so. Would you mind, Eddie? Oh, not a bit, Max. Hey, would you mind, George? Mm. George says he wouldn't mind. No. What does George do, lady? He's... he's an actor. Turn your light on his face, Max. Yeah. This is an actor? Just starting out. Just starting out. George, I hope you have a very wealthy father. <laughs> Now back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. It's the morning after George Harvey's great heroics while trying to foil the robbery of the Morning Star office. And George finds himself very much in the news. Hi, Mr. Harvey. You look much better since you had a shave. Well, spending the night tied up on the floor, Sammy, is not exactly a beauty sleep. I'm all sympathy, Mr. Harvey. Thank you. I'm glad someone is. Is Miss Armstrong here yet? In her office. Uh, how did she seem? Antagonistic. Everybody acts as if this thing was my fault. I'm going in and talk to her. Good luck, Mr. Harvey. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, George. I hope you're feeling all right. Of course, Susan. I told you on the phone earlier I'm as good as new. Uh, did they uh, get much money from the safe? It was insured. Oh, good. Uh, what are you reading? The news, extra. Bandits clean out star office as actor reporter plays dead. Actor reporter? You, George. Oh. Scooped. 
On the robbery of our own office. Well, those things happen, Susan. Why? That is an unfair question. Well, come on, actor reporter. They want to speak to you down at the police headquarters. Why? I've already told them the story when they found me this morning. I really don't know why, George. Maybe they want you to play a benefit. Oh, you really think so? No. Somehow I didn't think you did. <laughs> over this just once more and see if I can get it straight, Mr. Harvey. You're fighting me, Sergeant. Uh, no, but it's an idea. Uh, please, George. Now, you say you didn't see the man. No. But Miss Cartwright, who was with you, did see them. I was unconscious. Yeah, that, I believe. Uh, where were you coming from when you saw their light in the window? My drama class. Uh, Miss Armstrong, I thought you said this man was a reporter. I didn't say it. He did. Susan. Now, you say you rushed inside the office. What for? I was going to capture the bandits. Did you have a gun? No, but I acted like I did have. You acted like you did? Yes. Uh, Mr. Harvey, the next time you see two fellas robbing a safe, will you kindly not go into a role from your latest stage success, but just call the police? He will, Sergeant. And thank you. We know it's not dramatic, but unless we catch a few crooks now and then, we wouldn't have any jobs. Uh, you can see that, Mr. Harvey. I think so, yes. Uh, we'd appreciate it. That's all. Well, that sergeant didn't have to take such a superior attitude. I think he was very moderate under the circumstances, George. What circumstances? I practically get my skull caved in, lie all night on a cold stone floor. Wood. A cold wood floor, and just because I was coming home from a dramatic class, everybody treats me as if I was an eccentric or something. Uh, might I suggest, George, that you concentrate for a while on being merely a newspaper reporter? You mean give up the drama class? Well, how about you? Well, I hadn't thought much about it. But I should give it up. Just when Imogene says I'm beginning to project. Well, kindly project on your own time, Mr. Harvey. I shall continue to do so. I shall see you at the drama workshop tonight, Miss Armstrong. I shall see you tonight, Mr. Harvey. What, what a hand. hand. Students, an important announcement for you tonight. J. Palmer Herrick begins casting for his first public Hillsdale production. The cast will be chosen from my afternoon class and from this evening class. The vehicle will be an exciting drama of my own composing, a gangster drama of the early 30s, as yet untitled. I'm torn between titling it Public Enemy or High Sierra. Aren't you thrilled, George? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, very. Uh, uh, aren't you, Susan? Very. Uh, students, to appear in this original Herrick production, you must look a gangster, talk a gangster, be a gangster. Tonight, our class is a field problem under actual test conditions. Students of the drama, tonight we shall burglarize the vault of the Acme Storage Company. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Herrick, uh, don't you think you're being a little extreme? Well, naturally, my bright young man, we shall not in actuality break into the vault. I have arranged with the president of the company for us to use the premises. Oh, well, uh, that's different. <laughs> we shall therefore experience all of the turbulent emotions of the underworld outlaw, an experiment Stanislavski himself would have applauded. The class is dismissed to reassemble in 20 minutes in front of the Acme Storage Company. <laughs> You want to walk over with me, George? Well, as a matter of fact, Imogene, oh, I... Go right ahead, George. If you want to, that is. Coming, Georgie? Well, well, no, you see, Imogene, I thought I might walk over with Susan. Uh, things to discuss about the paper and so on. You, you understand. Oh, of course, George, I understand. Bye now. Why did you do that, George? Oh, I don't know, Susan. I uh, just want to do that, so. And do you have anything to talk over with me about the paper? Well, uh, no. You angry? Curious. Come on, George. Let's walk over to the Acme Warehouse the long way. George, 
Yeah? Think you'll get a role in this gangster play? Well, no. I don't think I will either. Stanislavski, coffee pots, who cares? I'm glad you said that. I feel just the same way. Dude, I'll never be an actor. I just haven't got the desire or talent again. You know, I think I might even drop out of the class. That is, if you were considering dropping out, I wouldn't want to leave you there alone. Oh, well, I wouldn't be alone. Imogene would still be there. That's just what I mean. Well, I think I'll drop out, too, after tonight. Give me more time for other things. What, George? Well, like when I used to come over to your house for dinner, and then after dinner we'd sit around and talk and... Yes, George? Well, we'd talk and... Well, you know, Susan. Sure, I know, George. It's the first time I ever kissed a girl in front of the First National Bank building. Miss Armstrong and Mr. Harvey. Then we're all here, huh? Now, you understand the field problem. You are desperate, hunted criminals experiencing surging, sudden alarm as you break into this building. Mr. Harvey, you and Miss Armstrong will now enter. Oh, sorry, Mr. Herrick. I, I left my skeleton key at home. Uh, Mr. Harvey, I arranged for the front door to be open. Oh. Well, you coming, Susan? Coming, Raffles. After you come out, the next couple will enter to we'll see their room. Huh. Dark inside. You better stay close to me, partner in crime. You know, I I do begin to feel like a real criminal, George. <laughs> me too. You know, maybe I ought to steal a light bulb or something just to make it authentic. Hey, you two, stand right where you are. George, say it. There's someone in here. Over there. He's got a gun. Oh, sure. Must be a student from the afternoon class. Eric put him in here to scare us. <laughs> what are you two doing in here? You see Maxie from the outside working on the vault? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spotted Maxie working on the vault. You're pretty cocky, friend. I guess you're going to plug us on the spot, huh? <laughs> uh, George, are you sure he's from the afternoon class? Oh, sure, Susan. He's the worst actor I ever saw. Come over here slow or I can get a look at you. No, no, friend. Here, here's a little tip for you. You're playing it much too broad. Not believable at all. One-dimensional characterization. Uh, George, hmm? I, I have a... Oh, funny... don't worry, Susan. If he's a gangster, I'm Mickey Rooney. Mickey, maybe you and the little lady better come back and see Maxie. Now move. No, no. Look, you don't even know how to handle a gun. Here, 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 give it to me. Yeah, yeah, here, I'll show you now. All right, you two, move. You see, that's the way. Here's your gun. Thanks. Now, let's go see Maxie. George, I don't like his looks at all. Oh, he's doing the best he can, Susan. He just isn't living his role, that's all. But there is someone in the back at the vault. Yeah, well, I hope he's a better actor than this one. Hey, Max, look what walked in on us. Yeah, well, they're running in pairs this season. Haven't I seen you before, boy bank robber? Sure, we're from the evening class. Yeah, you hear that, Eddie? They're holding classes these days. Hey, think of us. Yeah. Never took a lesson in our lives. George, hmm? George, look. Vault door, open. Oh, well, Harry must have arranged that. What should we do with him, Max? Uh, Max, Max, look, I'll give you the same tip I gave your friend Eddie here. You're both playing at a mile too wide. Real gangsters don't talk like that. Lighten it up a little. Yeah, lighten it up, Max. Yeah, yeah. I'd do a good Jimmy Cagney at parties. Uh, big laughs. George, this is the real thing. Look at the jewelry. They got it out of the vault. Oh, please, Susan. You see, fellas, you can't just play mugs anymore. You, you've got to give it some dimension. Maybe maybe one of you could have a kind of a old, uh, neurotic twitch. And the other could have a... Could, could... Susan, that's real jewelry. These are real safe crackers. That's what I've been telling you, George. Listen... You won't get away with this, you two. Now, you give us a good review in your paper tomorrow. We're thinking of taking our act to Broadway. All right, we talked to these two drama critics long enough, Max. You got the vault cleared out? We'll put them in it. Yeah, good. Hey, move. This is really a real gun. Well, you, you, you certainly fooled me. <laughs> well, look, uh, what do we do now, Susan? George, do you suppose they got the secret compartment in the vault? What's that? Huh? Where? Max, get in there and look around for a secret compartment. Yeah, right, Eddie. Well, you see anything in there? Yeah, not a thing. You better come on out, then. Maybe it was just a... The... Hey! In you go, Eddie. Hey. The door, Susan. Stop it! Hey! Oh, you can't do this! Open up! Hey. Nice timing on the door, Susan. If it hadn't been for you tricking them, I... Oh, you were magnificent, George. Magnificent. <laughs> was I, actually? Well, come on, Susan. We've got to get out an extra. Daring actor reporter captures bank robbers. Come on. <laughs>
Our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back with us in just a moment. You were sitting there very quietly, George. Hmm? Oh, just thinking. Susan, not that I'm going to resume my acting career. Well, that's fortunate. But I was wondering if there really is anything to this Stanislavski theory. You know... That if you visualize yourself in a role and live the role, people will accept you in it. Meaning what, George? Well, for the last five minutes, I have been an irresistible lover. No woman can withstand me. Kiss me, Susan. Why, of course, George. There. Stan, I think you've got something. <laughs> Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Von Zell inviting you to join us then. <laughs> 